Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm on to show you some results and some pros and cons of making your own jelly plate. I'm going to show you this. This is my homemade jelly plate and also this that can be used as a jelly plate alternative. This is a bit of fun foam with a padded envelope just in a zipped pocket. And this one was made with uh, gelatin, glycerin and water, hot water. I got both of these ideas from Betsy Doodle here on YouTube. So please check out Betsy Doodle. She's doing a jelly plate series called February Jelly and I wanted to play along. But if like me you find the uh, real jelly plates really expensive and you want to have a try try at it without uh, getting a lot uh, paying a lot out and then discovering that it's not for you um, I suggest that you try either of these methods that they've both got pros and cons but the both of them are the pros as a definite is they both are so much cheaper than the real thing. Now, I was following Betsy Doodle's tutorial and unfortunately before I went to the shops I forgot to check the recipe again and I couldn't find glycerin in the large bottles that she had got it and I didn't want to go, I was only wanting to go to Tesco and wasn't because of the pandemic don't want to go all over the place you know so so I found small bottles of glycerin in the Tesco and I got four I was thinking it was a cup full of glycerin but it's actually a cup and a half but actually when I came home and eh, well, when I finally got round to making it about a week later eh, I realised that eh, four bottles was even less than a cup so I adjusted the adjusted the recipe I thought three three uh, sachets instead of the seven sachets and and uh, put equal quantities of the glycerin and the hot water whisked it all up and put it in the microwave while following a video but unfortunately when I, I took it out <laughs> went to open the microwave. I think my microwave must have been a bit higher than than D from Betsy Doodles. <laughs> and it, I had lost most of the mixture all over my microwave. I had a right job clearing it. Anyway, I, I saved what I, I poured what I had into the into the baking tray that I had ready for it. <laughs> and then there wasn't that much left at all. So so I carried on cleaning the microwave first and then by the time I got back to it, it had already set and and it was set in a slope in a funny shape. <laughs> so I ripped it up and I and I put it back in the microwave for a few seconds and it melted. That's all it took to melt it completely again. So then I I thought, what can I use? I thought, oh, I used one of these Nutella jars. Well, the, the lid from it. It's not exactly ideal because it's got a, it's got a dimple in there and writing, but I have managed to get a few prints. Also, I've managed. I don't know about all these wee pitted bits here. They seem to be. It doesn't seem to be very smooth. And it's coming out in my papers, but but I'm getting an idea and I'm getting a play about with it. Anyway, uh, and I'll show you the difference between that and between the, this. Now this one's ideal because it's such a large, it's such a large pad that you can you can use a your A4 paper and get that. This size of jelly print would cost you an absolute fortune, uh, this size of jelly plate. So, but 
the thing with this is that when you're braying the paint, it doesn't seem to take to the take to this surface like it takes to the jelly plate. Let me show you an example here. So this is an example of today's a uh, tutorial from Betsy D. We're using cardboard that's been cut with a decorative edge scissors and making patterns from there with the decorative edge. So this is my homemade jelly plate. This is the first print and then as you can see that's a second print and that's the third print of it, fourth print fifth and sixth print whereas we're using the foam and the envelope and the plastic folder I got this result as you can see the paint goes into lines and there's The fine lines and with with the folder technique I, you only get two pulls with the paint and the second pulls very very faint like that and as you can see the, the texture's quite a bit different to the to the homemade jelly plate It's still quite an effective way of printing. So I'll show you more more examples of what I've done. I am enjoying this. I'm not sure if I would buy a jelly plate though, but I'm going to continue using both my plates. Uh, at least until the end of the February Jelly series. And also Crafty Michelle is hosting a collab for three weeks. We're, we're on the second week to this week. Uh, we've had the second week anyway. So I've had lots of inspiration uh, jelly printing. So I'm liking this one. This navy circle here I used um, toilet rolls to take the paint off of there. Um, this one's I've used this large piece of crochet lace that I had to, to give you text give the texture on this one. This one was just paint a selection of paints without any mark making. I think the rest of the circles are just paints without mark making as well. I thought that was quite effective, that one. And this one, I've printed the circle in gold but it's not really showing up very well but and that's another gold circle but I've also used the the paper that you run off you run off your brayer you run off the excess paint onto an egg, onto another bit of paper so I've decided to use the excess paint and give that a try as well I don't like this bit, this is just running running the brayer off again. But uh, this one here, I don't know if you'll be able to see the, the slight marks, there's like kind of diamond marks there. That was made by a piece of packaging that had um, chicken and chorizo balls on it. And just a bit of red and blue paint. And it went like that. 
the silver one as you can see has got the toilet roll marks again and that was just the second generation ghost print of this one And again, another piece of uh, paper that's been running off the brayer, the excess brayer off, and with a silver circle with the toilet rolls again. Then I thought I would try the other side. As you can see, you can see where the dimple is there, but also it's printed off the. It's took an imprint of the, the wording that was on, so I can't use that side. This one, mm, not so keen. Let's say uh, toilet roll print again. I like this one. This one's using the crochet lace again. With some teal and purple paints. You're still getting that dimple, <laughs> whatever side it is <laughs> I'm using. Yeah. So that's that's all the samples that I've made with the my fake jelly plate. Now for the samples using this one. This is what um, several layers of paint, and the top layer here I've used a paper fan. I don't know where I put my paper fan. It's the paper fan that I used in the that I made for the painted paper series. So that's just pressing it on and take it off again this is very grungy style of this one again with this one this is the toilet roll print, print again and there's also bubble bubble wrap in that one as well you can see there at the bottom Here's a clearer one of the bubble wrap, this orange paint, it's a kind of distressed middle. <laughs> I like how the bubbles show the dendritic prints. This one's another layer, this is another problem that I've had with, the, with this pad. Um, I'm getting lines a lot, brayer lines. I don't know, don't know how to stop that. It just doesn't seem to spread the paint the same as as it does on the jelly plate. But, uh, there's faint bubble bubble wrap marks on this one. Again, very grungy. Um, this was the ghost print of that one with some uh, I added the, the toilet roll circles to the ghost print and then took a ghost print this one's the paper fans again And I'm going to the print of the paper fan. I'm liking this one. This side was made with the, that white crochet lace that I've showed you. And this side was the paper fan again. But I decided to press it down and kind of twist it. I, th I was quite impressed with the marks that made by twisting it. 
So that's one of my favourite ones, I think. Um, here's another twisty one, the brown paint again. Mm. You can see, twisting it again, it gave me slightly different results. You never know what you're going to get with jelly printing, that's the fun of it. <laughs> I find with the uh, painted papers, it's more controlled and what. Slightly more anyway than than the uh, jelly print, and here's the ghost print of that brown fan twist. This is another one I, I really like. Again, it's the fan twist. With a kind of mustardy yellow colour. With some browns coming through, and I think that's a wee bit of greeny blue as well. And right. I like that one. Quite different. <laughs> also, like the ghost print to that one. It's just this one. Now this one looks a bit gory, perhaps I shouldn't have bothered using red. <laughs> Again, it's uh, the fan twist pattern. As you can see, I like the pattern. <laughs> fan twist. And that's the uh, ghost print, the red. This one was from today, it's a, with the card, making the pattern, and it's a mixture of silver, gold and copper, pearlescent uh, metallic paints. And this is a ghost print for it, but before I took the ghost print, I used the fan again and and uh, made the fat squishy marks with the fan as well. So it's slightly different from its original print. And that's the last I've got for you today. I hope you'll join me again soon and please give me a like and if you've not subscribed please subscribe. I'd love to hear from you in the comments as well. Thank you. Bye bye.